Okay, how's it going everybody? It is Jerry. I'm going to make another video for you today. This one's going to be about probably the main question I get when I'm live streaming, which is how do you live stream yourself making music and how do you make sure the audio quality is good? I've been live streaming online for a little over a year and what I found is a lot of people make this process way more complicated than it needs to be. So I want to show you the way that I figured it out a while ago. It does require you to get one extra thing, but it makes this whole thing a lot easier to set up. Okay, so just to get started, I'm going to start off assuming you know how to live stream in general. If you don't, I'm going to put some links in the comments below of how to get started live streaming. We can keep this video short and concise just about the audio quality, especially when it comes to your DAW. I'm going to show you how it works in Ableton, FL, Pro Tools, Studio One, all of them. It really doesn't make a difference what you're using and that's why I really like this method. So I said that you're going to need a few extra things and that's true. The extra thing that you're going to need is just one extra interface. So let me explain. The way that I'm seeing most people do this is using some type of program like Soundflower. What these programs do is they aggregate your devices together. So you'll say I have this device and this device and I want them to kind of act like one. Then when you go into your DAW you click on that one and that's how it plays and when you go into OBS you use that one and everything seems to go good through it. There are a few things that become really frustrating. One, if you want to get any of your computer noise through it, it becomes a lot harder to do so. Two, it can really have an impact on your latency especially if you're trying to track and record and do everything like that. You want to make sure that you have something that you're not introducing a bunch of latency or not being able to fully utilize the controls of your actual interface properly. It's not always the case with something like Soundflower, but I've seen it happen a lot and it was happening to me when I was trying to use it. Let me pull up an interface that I think is most common for you guys and explain what I mean. Okay, so this right here is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. And this is something that I see pretty much everybody having. Um, it's not the exact interface interface I use. I use this one plus I have the UAD arrow. But regardless, as long as you have two interfaces, you need one of them to have two inputs and I'll explain why. Let's just picture we had two of these right on top of each other. So you're going to be using this normal one as your normal interface, right? You have your mics plugging into here or your instrument, whatever you want to do. So there's this headphone out. Now what you can do is get a headphone splitter and split it. So one lane goes to your headphones and the other lane is actually going to wrap around and go to the inputs of the second interface, the other one that you have. If you have a different interface that actually has extra line outs in the back, I would use that instead of the headphones, but the headphone is there if you need it. Say you had the Scarlett that had four outputs on the back of it, you could take the other two outputs and route those in. It's going to make it a little bit easier for when you're trying to gain it to match the level, but regardless, you can use the headphone. It might not work just as good, but I would say it works 98% of the way. You might notice a little bit of difference in audio, but I tried it before I used my line outs and I never saw any difference. I still had stereo information left and right and everything seemed to work well for me. I have my normal interface that I choose in my DAW as being my main interface, right? And then the headphone out of that interface is also feeding into the ends of a new interface. That new interface, the only place I'm using it is inside of OBS. Sorry for the infinity display, but this is going to be the quickest way to show it. This is my OBS I'm currently using right now to record this video, so hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. But what we do is if we go into settings, we can see that in my audio settings, the only thing I have selected here is my Focusrite interface. That's what's handling all of my audio. Now my mic, I'm running a separate mic into my camera, and that's what I'm actually using to talk with. That's a different subject. You guys have questions about that. That's fine. Let me know. But for most of you, what you're going to want is just to have it like this. So whatever your second interface is, the one that you had the two plugged into, you're going to come in here into OBS and click it. Okay, so let's go down here. Let's just do something that makes noise. Let's go Go down and click right here and see if we can hear even our computer noise. Okay, so as you can hear, it's there. And we didn't have to open up a DAW, we didn't have to route it weird, we didn't have to create buses to do it. We're able to just have any audio that's going through our initial interface is going to come through our next interface. So now I have Ableton open right here. And what you can see is if I go into my settings, you're going to see under my audio tab here that I have just my normal interface, my universal audio Thunderbolt interface selected. I don't have to do anything different. I can still control it just like I normally would. I can pull it up and have it here and change all the settings as I would on it normally. I can do everything that I need to do. And it doesn't matter what program you're running. Let's open up FL Studio. I'll show you the same thing. The other nice thing about doing it this way is you don't lose audio when you're switching between programs. You don't 
don't have to worry that, oh no, in this same live stream, I was working on a project in Pro Tools. Now I'm working on a project in FL Studio and something went weird with the audio. Everyone's saying I can't hear it. I either have to restart it or reinitiate Soundflower, or turn it off and on. This way is just always gonna work because you're having a sole interface dedicated to just the audio for your stream. So again, inside of FL Studio here, what I'm gonna do is come into here and show you that right here under my audio preferences tab, I have it as my universal audio Thunderbolt. Everything is going normal, so nothing has to change. I don't need to come in here when I'm gonna live stream and select Soundflower, which again, can cause issues with the latency and can cause issues overall. Okay, so to show an example of this in action, here's a song that I actually made on live stream yesterday. So let's run through a piece of it and see if we can hear it. Okay, as you can hear, everything is coming through clearly. No matter what I click, it's all gonna play through. I didn't have to set up anything weird in my master chain. It's just going out to my normal channels. I don't have to have any weird buses set up for it to work. And if in the middle of the live stream, someone said, hey, can you check out my beat and see what you think of it? You can open up YouTube and immediately you're having no issues. Anything that plays out of the outputs of your initial interface is gonna come into the new one that's going into OBS. You'll catch everything from computer sounds to your DAW, to the internet, to your video editing software, anything that makes sound, you can have it play. So that's why I like doing it this way because it's a set it and forget it type of a situation. Now I could take you through every other DAW, but they're all the same. And doing it this way makes it really easy. As these interfaces, these focus rights, they're so common. I see them going for 50, 60 bucks all the time used online. And all you have to do is just have one extra one. You probably have an extra one lying around if you've been making music for any length of time. Realistically, you've gone through a few interfaces or you've upgraded, just grab your old one, use it. It's gonna work just fine. All you have to do is on your inputs though, make sure that you have the same exact volume set on each. So if you have an interface where you can link them and turn them up together, that's great. If not, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of eyeballing where you talk or play music and just make sure you turn them both up until you're getting the same gain. There is the small chance that you're going to be getting slight distortion through the mic pre's or through the uh, inputs on the second interface, but it's never been an issue for me. I've never really noticed a difference going back and forth. And obviously you're going to have a difference in audio anyway because you're live streaming and that audio has to be compressed down for the stream. Okay, thank you all for watching. If you like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell on the channel. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more information about things like this. Let me know down below what you want me to make a video about. And I'll actually shout out whoever wrote the comment that helps me pick my next video. If you want to see me stream, I live stream on Twitch at Jerry underscore music. The link will be below. I hope that this tip helped you out. I hope that we get to see more people live streaming their music creation process. I'm excited to see what you guys do. Let me know if this worked for you or if you have an even better way. I'm always looking for ways to make things more efficient. I appreciate you all for watching. Take it easy.